Hi, welcome to question four of the 2022 Junior Cert Higher Level Maths. As always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at gmail, shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So let's get stuck in. Um, now, as always, I suggest pausing the video and just having a go uh, yourself. But assuming you're back or already have, let's give a read through to part A. So it says here that the three triangles A, I see here triangle A, doesn't look right angled. Okay, um, we're missing a side down here and we've given no angles. Uh, B, now we're given all three sides here, but two of them in algebraic form. Okay, so that's cool. And then C, we're given a similar thing. Um, now it looks like it might be right angled, but maybe not. Okay, we, we've not told, we can't assume. And that's given in algebraic form as well, but do, using a different variable. So X and Y would be two different numbers. So it says the given lengths of the sides of each triangle are in centimeters, where X and Y are natural numbers. So that just means that X and Y are positive whole numbers. That's all that means. So in this question, it says take the perimeter mean the length of the perimeter. Now, I'm not sure what that means, to be honest. And then we looked at triangle A, B, and C already. So five marks for part A, okay? And we see here the perimeter of triangle A is eight centimeters. Now, without even going any further, at this stage, I just write down the formula, okay? So perimeter is equal to add all sides. We're looking here at um, the triangle A, so maybe I'll redraw it, okay? Just to help myself out. And I go two, 3.5, I'm told the perimeter is equal to 8, and I don't know the side down here in the bottom. Okay, it's going to call it x. I probably shouldn't call it x, actually, because there's x over here. Um, whatever, unknown. It says two of the sides have length 2 centimeters and 3.5. We have that on the diagram. Work out the length of the third side. So if I have my formula here, okay, now in the triangle, there's basically, with the formula here, there's four unknowns. But I know the perimeter is 8. I'm told that. Is equal to, add all sides, is 2 plus 3.5 plus, now I'm going to use x because I, I, did, I did down here. So I have an equation now that I formed based on the formula with only one unknown. So this is solvable. It's just a matter of going ahead and doing it. So working left to right, I'm going to do the little addition sum here. 2 plus 3.5 is equal to 5.5. And then I'm looking to go, I want to solve for x, so I want to get rid of this 5.5. I can do it by taking 5.5 away from it. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Now, the reason I did that was so that these would cancel, and they have, and I'm left with x is equal to, now 8 take away 5.5 is 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. Okay, and the units there were centimeters. I can test it, that's 2.5. Do these all add to give eight? Two and 2.5 is 4.5. 4.5 and 3.5 is eight. Job done. Okay, so this is the answer in the notes. Done nothing different, okay. Now part B, one and two are marked together and they're worth 10 marks. I have the same blurb here at the beginning copied across. So we can just get stuck into B part one says, write down the perimeter of triangle B in terms of X. So again, perimeter is equal to add all sides. So if I just follow through, the perimeter is equal to, well, three plus two X plus two X plus one. Now, I, I, shouldn't leave, I should always leave my answer in the simplest form if I can. So really, I'm just adding like terms. So the 3 and the 1 can combine to give 4. And the 2x and the 2x add to give 4x. So if I know what x is, I can calculate the perimeter. Now, arguably, if I knew what the perimeter was, I could calculate x, Okay, if, uh, if, if I was given that. Which I probably am, now that I look down. So part 2 says the perimeter of triangle B is 24. So I know that that now is 24. Remember, you can only solve an equation of one unknown. So this was unsolvable. But once I was given more information, 
this was solvable. Okay. Once I have this, I can just use algebra. I go, I want to get rid of the four. I want X on its own. So let's take the four away. Do it once, I do it both. So I've created two calculations. So let's go left to right and resolve them. 24 take away four is 20. Four minus four cancels. And I'm left with the four X. Now you probably guess the answer. Four times some number gives 20. So the number has to be five. But if I follow through in the algebra, if you want to get rid of the number here in front of the x, you divide it by the number itself. If I do it one side, I have to do it to everything else. I'm left then with x is equal to 20 divided by 4 is 5, and the units there are centimeters. And that's part b. Okay, so I've done nothing different here in the notes. All looks good. Now part c, now I've just copied across the images here in the bottom, but it says... The perimeters of three triangles, A, B, and C, form a, of their three triangles. So the same three triangles we had in the beginning. A, B, and C form a linear sequence. Now, the question is, what does this mean? Now, a linear, I suppose, any linear model or sequence, the change between each um, jump is the same. And for lack of a better word, you could call that the slope is equal okay so it's the same slope the whole way along and that's what makes it linear with a quadratic it's the, is the second difference um constant but with a linear sequence is this the the the, the slope constant um now it says triangle c has the largest perimeter i'm not sure if that's going to be useful or not but we'll just have to keep an eye on it part one says the perimeter of triangle c is k centimeters so we don't know they say k is an element of n, so it's going to be a positive whole number. And they say find the value of, of, of k. So follow through the same logic as before. Perimeter is equal to add all sides. So I know the perimeter of that is k. So k is equal to, now add all sides of this is 5 plus y squared. Now the second I see y squared, I'm being suspicious that quadratic is going to appear plus the y squared plus 3. Now, if I simplify that, I end up with k is equal to now y squared plus y squared is 2y squared. Okay, 5 and 3 is 8. So this equation has two unknowns. So I can't solve, I can't do anything more here. Okay, unless I apply some logic. Now, I know that the perimeter of the first triangle, let me just double check those figures, was um, 8, okay? The perimeter of the second one was um, 24, okay? So you just write those down. So how do I phrase that now um, for myself? Perimeter of A is equal to 8. Perimeter of B is equal to, wasn't it 16? 24, bloody hell was 24. So the perimeter C, if you see there's a sequence here, okay, it's because it's linear, it's going to go up by the same amount. So eight, the difference between 24 and eight, so take them away, is 16. So the perimeter of C should be 16 bigger than 24. So it'd be 24 plus 16 would be 40. Okay, so what's K? K is equal to 40. Now, in a sense, I probably didn't need to do this so early. I probably should have read the question better. Um, that's on me. Um, but again, this is a problem that lots of us have, uh, me especially. I jump into a question and I don't take the time to read it three, four, ten times, whatever is needed to figure out what's happening. Now, you don't always have time in an exam to be reading things ten times. But it's important to read it carefully and read it multiple times. Okay, now this is very, very simple, but, but you know, that case. Now, I'll need this statement here. K is equal to 2y squared plus 8. So I've already done that from up here. Okay. Now, I know that K was 40. That's what it was actually supposed to do. So I've saved myself some time on part 2. And in essence, this is a quadratic here. Now, um, let's just simplify this a little bit. So I can... I want to find out what y is. So y should stay where it is. 
I'm going to take eight away from here to get rid of it. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to both. Now working left to right, I've created a few little arithmetic sums here. 40 take away 8 is 32, is equal to 2y squared. That didn't change. I wasn't doing anything to it. 8 take away 8 is 0, so it's, it's gotten, I've gotten rid of it. Then I look left to right and go, I don't want y squared or 2 times y squared, so I'll try to get rid of the 2 first. I can do that by dividing by 2. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So 2 divided by 2 will cancel to give y squared is equal to 32 divided by 2 is 16. Now I'm going to just rewrite that up here. Now from an algebraic point of view, if I want to get rid of the square, I should do the opposite to it, so square root it. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So the square root and the square cancel. You're left with y is equal to the square root of 16 is 4. And that should be it. So 4 centimeters is equal to y. It's important to include your units just in case there's a mark or whatever uh, available for that. And in the answer on the next page, um, I suppose I, I did what I should have done. I just found the difference. Again, a linear sequence means there's a constant difference. Okay, and that, that's, if you remember that trick, this, quite, this first part is handy. Then the second part, we're doing like we did in parts A and B. We're finding the perimeter in terms of, of, of in this case, y. Once you see a quadratic, and I know this is quadratic because it has only one variable and the largest power is two. If it's a quadratic, you're going to try solve it. Okay. Now in a sense, this is a simple solution because there was no variable, but this is still a solution to a quadratic from, um, from one perspective. So I think that's the end. So see you on question five. As always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Um, please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists.